So this one is not about quantum mechanics. <laughs> this is a uh, talk about spin. Um, I'm Tony Wildish. I work in the Data Science Engagement Group, but I'm giving this talk on behalf of the Spin Working Group, which is mostly the Infrastructure Services Group. Uh, spin, uh, I'll get to what it is in a minute, but let's start with the problem that we're trying to solve. In general, in a, on a complex system like NERSC, large experiments, large collaborations, you do more than just log in, run a few commands, run batch and jobs. Typically, people run all sorts of services, databases, web servers, workflow managers, things like this. Um, not just things that run in the background as batch jobs. So, um, also in distributed uh, collaborations, there are quite frequently services that communicate across the sites involved in that. So, there's all sorts of things. And whereas typically these services would be on dedicated hardware, you would buy a node for running your web server, you would have a system administrator install things on it for you. Um, this is a very expensive way of doing things. It's slow, it's clunky. Uh, the alternative, which a lot of people do, is to just install stuff in their home directory and run it out of their home directory, which is also not very satisfactory because it's not well managed. Um, it's not immune to things like downtimes, uh, system changes, stuff like that. And SPIN, the whole purpose of SPIN is to give these services a proper home. So SPIN, the name down there, the name came before the acronym, I think. So that's a classic example of let's find the acronym after we found the name for it. Scalable Platform Infrastructure at, uh, at NERSC. If you know what Amazon Web Services is, you can think of this as AWS for NERSC. Though I don't think Corey would like, it, like me saying that, but that's basically a good way to think about it. It provides you a place to run services, get access to resources uh, for things that you want to run as persistent services here at NERSC. So it runs uh, Docker containers in a manageable environment. It's a flexible, scalable platform, and it's tightly integrated with NERSC resources. It's not uh, providing capabilities like uh, elastic compute, so it's not a place where you run large numbers of batch jobs which scale out or anything like that. For that, you use the regular batch queues. It's just for the um, auxiliary services. So why is it running Docker? Well, Docker is a very good technology, and you've probably all heard of it. The, the, the great thing about Docker is that you can develop a service on your laptop and get it working the way you want. And from there, you can then deploy it in minutes onto Spin. And you can be pretty certain it will run exactly the same way. No dependency hell. No, I've got version of this and you've got version of that of MySQL, none of that. Once it's on spin, if you find that it's suddenly popular, your paper goes viral and everyone starts hitting your website, you can have the service automatically scale out, put a load balancer in front of it and then it will just scale out automatically uh, for performance. You can get access to the HPC systems here, so you can uh, submit batch jobs, access the file systems, things like this so that you can do things like um, have a web service which receives incoming data, submits a batch job to run on that, and then uh, provides the data back to the user who submitted the sample. And NERSC manages all of this under the hood. You only care about the services and what they're supposed to do and how they couple together. NERSC puts all the rest of it together for you. So what do you get out of this? You get to focus on developing your app, not managing services. You don't worry about Apache upgrades or anything like that. You're just building a Docker container. If you can get it working on your laptop, that's your side of it pretty much done. You can create a new database, web portal, or other kind of application on demand. You'll be able to just log into Spin um, and spin one up the way you want to. You don't need to worry about any of the details of the underlying infrastructure. What machine am I running on? You don't care about that. You get a URL for free. You get a stable DNS name, all this sort of thing. Basically, you care about services, not servers. And what Spin does is, is separates the services from the servers so that you care about the services and that the ISG team care about the servers. They can upgrade the operating system on these machines without interfering with your packages because the containers are isolated through Docker. You get scalability and fault tolerance for free when they need to do an upgrade they will move your service from one machine to another, or rather they will stop your service, restart it again on another machine. You will, you will not see any break in service if your service is designed correctly. And so you, you will be, um, you'll get far higher uptime than any of the individual machines would. 
Um, plus, using Docker images is really very useful. Docker is very widely accepted by the community. There are a large number of uh, standard Docker images out there that get you started. If you want to put together a, a web service and a database server, you just look for the official Apache um, Docker image and the official MySQL image, and you're off and going, up and running. So if you've used virtual machines before, you get the benefits of virtual machines without any of the overhead. Virtual machines still have an overhead compared to um, Docker containers. And you get all the benefits of the cloud with the, ben the added advantage of having site integration to NERSC. So Docker, OK, I've spoken a bit about this. You will all have seen the logo, I'm sure. Uh, Docker is a tool for building and running containers. So a container is essentially a shrink-wrapped, packaged piece of software. It contains all the dependencies. Um, it's often compared to a virtual machine. It's not like, really like a virtual machine, but you can think of it that way if you like. It's like a mini virtual machine that you can carry around with you. It's very easy to learn the basics. There are tons of good documentation out there, lots of good tutorials. Just Google Docker tutorial, and you'll find one. somebody somewhere has put together a simple tutorial that does exactly what you want. And as I say, there's a large ecosystem, lots of very good examples out there to start with already. The container itself is a lightweight portable package for your software. It isolates you from the operating system. You build it on your laptop, and then you can run it identically as it is on NERSC. Um, this also, I'm repeating myself a bit here, this, is, this gives you a very efficient use of resources as well. The fact that the containers are lighter weight than virtual machines means that you can pack more of them into the machines that are being used behind the scenes on this. So there's really a great deal of flexibility on the NERSC side in making sure that things are scheduled and shared around efficiently. So there's a lot of terminology that goes along with this container, image, service, and stack. Container and image tend to be used interchangeably. Um, I have to read this myself to get it right, and I had to look it up to make sure I got it right first. So the image is a standalone software package, a standalone piece of software that contains everything you need. Think of this as the, uh, the DVD with the installation on it. So it contains the, the, the package. Uh, and the container is a runnable instance of that. So you take the image and you start a container from it. So the service is typically comprised of one or more containers, web server, database server, uh, load balancer, something like this, which put together will all provide a single uh, piece of functionality, a single capability. So a web server might have two containers. It might have a front end for authorization and a back end, which actually does the request processing. Um, you can separate it out like that, and then you can have these two developed by separate people. As long as they agree on the API, it works nicely. Uh, or you can have a database server with a single container or more than one if you wish. Put all these services together, and that forms an application stack. So fortunately, we have a picture of it here. The application stack that you see here is the whole thing. And in blue inside, you see um, instances of the services. So the load balancer is a standard service which comes along with SPIN. It comes along with the infrastructure that's used for SPIN. This load balancer is serving um, a web service, which has, in this case, two container instances running. So it's load balancing across the two of them. And these two web services are both using a, a key value ser store service, maybe MongoDB uh, in one case, and also a database service as well. So both of these web service instances can be using both of those. You can easily put together any sort of level of complexity that you need for your application. So once you've got your stack like this, you then have to actually run it somewhere. Um, if we were to just give you a bunch of virtual machines and say you can start your stack there, then you wouldn't be much better off, really, than you would be just trying to run it out of the home directories. Uh, you still need to make sure that things can be scheduled. They can start on when you want them to start. They can restart after system upgrades, things like this, um, that you're not swamping resources because you're using the same machines as everybody else. So for this, you need an orchestration service, an orchestration tool. And the tool we've settled on is called Rancher. It's a commercially available product. Um, we've adopted it here. And the idea behind this is that you can, you can upload your application stack. You can just give it a list of Docker images and tell it how these are plumbed together. 
this service uses port so and so to connect to that service and just simple configuration in a text file and then Rancher will make sure that your service is running in the way that you've described. So underneath it you'll have a bunch of nodes. Uh, these are in fact virtual machines in our case um, and these nodes will be running application stacks, a variety of different application stacks all mixed together in various ways. You can specify how this uh, mix happens. Uh, for instance, if you want to make sure that your uh, database backend is not only load balanced, but that each instance of it is on a separate physical host, you can tell it to do this, and it will then spread them out in the same way, in the right way. And when a rolling upgrade of the operating system is done, these services will be stopped one by one in a way which keeps your entire stack running, and will then bring them back afterwards. So yes, it manages failover, service ownership, and, the, and the, all the, the details of management which you really don't want to care about if you can avoid it. So the philosophy behind Docker, um, it's often summarized as build, ship, run. You build it, you send it somewhere, and you run it there, and it's that simple. You don't have to install, deploy, patch, figure out how to make this installation work on that machine. Uh, because the Docker file, the Docker image, does it all for you. So on the left there, on your laptop, you start from a Docker file, a text file which describes your, your service, and from that you build a Docker image. The image then gets sent to a registry. We have one in Spin, so the Spin registry is a place where you would send your images to. And from that registry, um, your application stack in blue there your application stack would say, I want this image from the registry and I want that image from the registry plumbed together in various ways, different ports, different services, different environment variables, different configurations, whole set of services all plugged together and that forms your application stack which provides your, uh, your total functionality. You can also pull images from Docker Hub if you wish or from elsewhere on the internet. You're not just constrained <coughs> to pulling from spin. So if you, if you want to use a stock Apache image, you can just pull it straight from the Docker Hub Apache images, things like that. And then within NERSC, your, your stack, your application stack, can access things like the global file systems, at least I was talking about earlier, through a volume mount, so that you can mount deep into the file systems. You can get read-write access if you need it. Or through APIs and SSH, you can access the, the batch, machi batch machines, the login nodes so that you can submit batch jobs and watch for their output coming back. So who's using it so far? We currently have a number of early adopters. The uh, CID division, Computational Research, uh, they have a, a, a development project on there which is soon moving to production. There's the ESS Dive data archive collaboration between NERSC and CID, that's also using SPIN. And at the Joint Genome Institute, we have several users who have uh, moved a number of applications there, um, web portals, databases, things like that. Also within NERSC, we are using it internally for a number of things. Uh, licensed servers, the compilers that we heard about earlier, many of those are licensed, so you need a licensed server running for those. That fits in perfectly there. Uh, data analysis portals like uh, Jupyter and RStudio, these are also in spin now. Um, people are doing prototypes. PyTokyo, I won't talk about, about that much, but that's an interface for looking at file system performance and batch job performance. And the multi-factor authentication that we also heard about earlier, that's being prototyped in uh, uh, SPIN. So edge services, uh, those of you from the particle physics communities will know about Frontier Cache and CVMFS. Uh, those are running inside SPIN as well. And also internally we use it for our, uh, our CSG group, use it for their own documentation. And the Shifter registry, um, which you'll hear about Shifter next, the Shifter registry is also stored in SPIN. So there's all sorts of edge services. If you want to run something which is not an interactive command that you're waiting for, and it's not a batch job that you're going to let run in, on its own and come back, if it's something that you want to run that runs long term, and you, you need to know that it's constantly running, you should be thinking about using SPIN for it. So the current status. SPIN is currently in pilot mode. So internal projects for NERSC, um, several users such as the Joint Genome Institute who are working directly with NERSC staff 
and it will soon be open to trained users. So it will soon be going into um, uh, beta mode so that uh, people who've had some training on it will be allowed to use it directly through an API. So next question is when do you get the training? Um, the first spin up, I did not choose that name. <laughs> the first spin up hands-on training session is planned for mid-May. Capacity will be limited at first because we want to learn how to, uh, you know, we have a learning curve on how to support you as much as you have the learning curve on how to use the service. So there will be an application available on the website. I'll show you the, the website in a minute. And just watch the weekly newsletter. Rebecca sends around a very nice weekly newsletter which everybody reads, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's got your names. So um, watch the weekly newsletter for announcements. The training will be announced in there. And then go to the website and sign up. So the website, under the nurse.gov, four users, data analytics and services. And then, well, it fits on my screen, but it doesn't fit there. Down at the bottom, you'll find spin. So if you've got a service that looks like it fits that bill, uh, don't hesitate. There's the mail there. Um, send a mail to that list and uh, start talking about it. Let's find out what you've got, what you need. Uh, meanwhile, if you haven't come across Docker before, do a quick Google, pick up a few tutorials. Um, by all means, uh, ask questions. And follow the, those links to the SPIN documentation, which is appearing as we speak, pretty much. And um, let us know what you need. Questions? <laughs> okay.